In the great Nidhidhyasana text, for those who have gone beyond the pale of enlightenment or are on the cusp of enlightenment, there are a lot of stories within the great Nidhyasana text about the experiences of the sages. And we find that a lot within the Nidhyasana text, the Ashtavaraka Gita. Now in this verse that I'll read to you in the Ashtavaraka Gita, it goes into detail about the experience of the enlightened sage, what the reality for them is like, which reveals a paradox or a contradiction that we never have thought about as an identity for those who are fearful of embarking on the spiritual path. The fear arises when we think that there is not going to be a sense of person there if we engage within the Nidhyasana's traditions. But this text here today will flip that on its head and you may walk away from this thinking a little bit differently. So without further ado, let's get into this verse. An indescribable state is attained by the wise one whose mind has melted away, its functions having ceased to operate, and who is free from delusion, dreaming, and dullness. So you see in this verse how it states that the wise one is free from delusion, dreaming, and dullness. Now, a lot of us think that if we embark on this spiritual journey, we will become just like blank robots with no sense of personhood or no sense of identity if we follow them to the nth degree. Now, in this verse, it throws it on its head. It turns it into a paradox and it contradicts what a lot of people think because in the Ashtavaraka Gita, it's saying that when we dissolve the identity, that's how we get rid of delusion, dreaming, and dullness. We don't attain dullness or blankness or delusion or we aren't in some sort of dream state of psychology when we get rid of the identity. We actually get rid of them when we dissolve the identity is what the Ashtavaraka Gita is saying. Now to understand this at a deeper level, we need to understand vrittis. Now vrittis in Sanskrit means the whirlpool of mind. So the waves of the mind. And the idea within Vedanta and also within the yogic schools is that we need to settle the vrittis so that we can look directly into the mind or directly into the water, to use that analogy. Now, the idea is that the water is naturally transparent and reflective. And when it is completely still, we can see right into the nature of the mind. Now, in yoga, they speak about naroda. Now, naroda is the stilling of the mind, stillness. And so the practice of naroda is to still the vrittis. And that's why in the very first verses of the yoga sutras, it says chitta vritti narodaha. So the cessation of the mental activity so that we can see into the nature of the mind, which is yoga. Now, that's the process that is being discussed here within the Ishtavraka Gita. The wise one has brought their vrittis to a standstill. They've purged all delusion, all inertia, so that they can then see reality as it truly is. All of that delusion and inertia and dreaming, etc., obstructed them to see the one true reality of Brahman. And so when all functions of the mind cease to operate, then we begin to see reality as it truly is. Now that may seem paradoxical or even contradictory for a lot of people because a lot of people think, well, if I just destroy my mind, so to speak, not that you can destroy it, but if you cease those functions of the mind, if you cease the whirlpool of activity within your mind, a lot of people think that they'll just be a blank canvas and they will have no input in life and they'll just offer nothing. Whereas in the Ishtavaka Gita, it's actually saying it's only when you dissolve that, that's when you can provide something for the world. And so we're flipping it on its head as opposed to being fearful about that process. And only those who are sincere and go through the process understand what the Ishtavaka Gita is trying to say. And so when the vrittis begin to cease, the final realization bursts forth. And now we don't need to give that a description. We don't need to name that because no description is really possible for that state of consciousness. But we don't need to try and intellectualize what that is. But 
you will come into that understanding and then you will begin to live that realization in your life. And it's not by clinging to your identity, by clinging to the mental activity that you think you are, but it's by dissolving that. And that's the difference between, as the Astravaka Gita says, the wise one and the average Joe and Jane, is the association with the vrittis. And so the sage just doesn't associate with the vrittis and they've done the mental training, so to speak, to bring the waters of the mind back into equanimity, back into Narodaha, and so that they can see the true nature of reality by looking into the nature of their mind, which is empty, spontaneous, and free. And that's the great boon that the great sages have brought back for all of us to understand. And that's why the Ashtavrika Gita is so important for those on the spiritual path. Because once you understand the depths of this text, then you'll understand the depths of the one true reality that we are all a part of, but are under the hypnosis that we are all separate from one another. But this is not true. And the Ashtavrika Gita continues to reinforce that into our mind so that we can be liberated in this life not by a type of liberation that is bound to the identity but a liberation that is embodied when the identity itself has disappeared shanti shanti shanti